Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And this is the tie of past Grand Master Fred Bean who had his tie done by Edgar over at Masonic Revival. And if you're interested in hearing Fred's story about why he became a Mason, it's unusual. It's not the the typical story, head over to my Lodge's YouTube channel and you can see an interview there where Fred uh, gave his little story, so check that out. We have reached the working tools of a master mason, so I'm going to recite to you the uh, presentation, how that's done here in the state of Mississippi, and then we're going to uh, delve down into an explanation of it. It reads, the working tools of a master mason are all the instruments of masonry indiscriminately, more especially the trowel. The trowel is an instrument made use of by operative masons to spread the cement which unites a building into one common mass. But we, as free and accepted masons, are taught to make use of it for the more noble and glorious purpose of spreading the cement of brotherly love and affection that cement which unites us into one sacred band or society of friends and brothers, among whom no contention should ever exist, but that noble contention, or rather emulation, of who can best work and best agree. So all the instruments of masonry, more especially the trowel. So what we're meaning by that is that we're taking into account all the tools we've mentioned before now. We're adding the trowel and saying that even more especially the trowel's sort of maybe the most important tool of a master mason, but that all the other instruments of masonry are applicable to a master mason as well. One explanation that's given for these tools is something that I feel is a bit of a surface explanation because it relates entirely to the operative use of these tools and while there certainly are operative masons who are a part of speculative masonry the fraternity itself is not an operative guild anymore it is a speculative fraternity and as such while I'm going to give you this explanation, I'd like for you to sit back and think instead about the speculative uses for these tools and see what other sort of understanding you can come up with. So the explanation is this. An entered apprentice uses a 24 inch gauge and a common gavel. Operationally, they may be the ones out in the quarry actually chiseling away at the mountain. So they're taking the 24 inch gauge and making sure that they're getting the block the size that they need it and chiseling it out but that's all they're doing. It's just the rough ashlar. It's just a stone rude and from the quarry ready for them to then take over to the fellow craft. So the fellow craft is going to use his tools, the plum, square, and level, and apply those to that rude stone and get the edges square, get the flat surfaces flat, and all the other parts that they need to to make it an actual usable stone to be used in the construction of a building. But then the master mason is the one who is responsible, has the skill to be able to fit those stones together and make a sound structure out of them. So he needs to know how the process was done because these master masons are supposedly putting in the orders and saying okay we need stones that are this size by this size and it needs to you know mark that stone as this number or whatever the case may be so that by the time the stone gets to them at the construction site they can actually put the pieces together as was designed from the beginning so here operationally we're talking about spreading the cement that is going to unite those stones into one common mass. So that, that is the operational explanation that seems to be generally accepted as why these tools are used in these degrees and why we end up with the trowel at the very end. But we're told here 
that as speculative masons, or as free and accepted masons as it's specifically worded, that we use this to spread the cement of brotherly love and affection. And at this point I want to emphasize the brotherly love again. We talked before in the first video of this series about how brotherly love is one of the most excellent tenets of a Master Mason. And I think this is a good time to make sure that you have picked up on something that is never explained in any ritual I've ever heard of and is yet right there in the open staring you in the face. Do you remember how we started the Entered Apprentice degree? We started it with brotherly love, relief, and truth. We end here on the Master Mason degree with friendship, morality, and brotherly love. We both started with and have now ended at brotherly love. That is how important harmony is to the Masonic fraternity and how important it is to the concept of Freemasonry that it is in fact possible for people of all sorts of different cultures and beliefs to meet together and discuss ideas for the sake of humanity in general. Brotherly love at the very beginning and here again at the end. I don't know another way to enforce how important those words are to you than by just emphasizing and pointing out the situation and use of these. It's the only ones that's repeated at the very beginning and at the very end. On a much lighter note, I enjoy using the phrasing that we use here in Mississippi to pick on my friends and brothers. If we're at a, um, a practice, if we're at a congressional school or whatever you might term them where you want, any time where the specific purpose of the gathering is for the brethren to come together to practice degree work itself. Uh, I'm always joking around about how, brethren, I'm sure we can best agree that I'm the one who is able to best work this part, or, or however I might twist those words around to pick about uh, people, about, you know, every let's, let's just agree I, I did the work best. Usually I'm bringing that up because I totally fouled something up and I'm just wanting to make light of the situation. So uh, there, there's a lot of things about Freemasonry that can be taken very, very seriously and have, uh, or should have at least, some very lifelong consequences about what it really means to us. But at the same time, there's a lot about Freemasonry that's just fun and uh, a lot that we can do to pick up each other's spirits by recognizing the seriousness of it but by having fun with each other at the same time. So I hope in the past that I've never had anybody get offended by my use of uh, those words and making light of them, but uh, you know, it's one of those things that makes Freemasonry what it is to me. So there we have it, the working tools of a master mason, more especially the trowel. Another emphasis about the importance of brotherly love and what brotherly love really means. Let's go back into it one last time. That cement which unites us into one sacred band or society of friends and brothers among whom no contention should ever exist but that noble contention or rather emulation of who can best work and best agree. If you're still harboring anywhere in your heart some illusion that Freemasonry is not there for all men, then let's go all the way back to the Entered Apprentice and let's come all the way through here to the Master Mason and you find me somewhere in there that suggests that it's not for everybody. 
Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch. The next time we come back, we're going to step into the second section of the Master Mason degree. There's very precious little that I can share with you about this. It's probably the largest section of our ritual work in Mississippi that is uh, still a secret where it's not printed down work. But there's a little bit we can infer from what we do have. So we'll get into the second section lecture next time. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch and for those who check out the donations page to help support the show. We'll see you next time. Bye.